Hi everyone, it's time for another project. Uh, as you know, I mentioned before, I was I was going to build a CNC machine for my lab. Now I started to uh, buy the parts and some of the stuff that I need to build the CNC machine. Uh, one thing you need, or I think, is going to is going to be handy, or I'm going to use to build the CNC machine, is a microcontroller. Uh, I'm going to use uh, Arduino to be to control my. Uh, motors and stepper motors and stuff like that and the rest of the stuff if we can zoom in yeah there we go uh, this is the Arduino that I have it's the Uno uh, as you can see here uh, I've already done some breadboarding and stuff on it because I needed uh, to um, use the USB chip to program something else so I've just put a little break in thing so I can switch between uh, using this or uh, these two other pin headers that I put here so the thing with this is once once you start working you know using this you, you got leads coming and going everywhere every di every other direction from here so I decided to build something that uh, I have Arduino in the middle of it and then I have uh, prototype prototyping board all around it so uh, you know I don't have to wire things around too much and you know everything is there self-contained so I decided to to use breadboard and you can see here I've got a few of these lying around I decided to mount this on something, on a piece of uh, plexiglass, if I can just get here, so this is a plexiglass, as you can see here, now what I've decided is to use um, different sizes of uh, breadboard, if the camera, yep, yeah, there we go, different sizes of breadboard, if I can grab here, so if I put different sizes of breadboard on this, then I got wire coming from underneath here to the top to each row and column of here. Then what I have in essence is is a platform for my Arduino, and then I can have a power supply. I can have a, you know different sensors. I can have different modules plugged into this platform. Then it's basically self-contained, so I, I don't have to have too much wire. You know power supply wire going around. I've got everything on top of this. I can, you know, I can do my prototyping. I can make everything work. And once that's done, then I can upload my uh, code into a new Arduino and then just, you know, have it to run whatever, uh, you know, whatever I've decided to run. Now I've started doing this. So what I've done is, I've got it at Mega three two eight ICs, and I've already put Arduino uh, Mini on them the bootloader so these these in essence are Arduinos so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have three of these because I want to have a platform but I've got three or four Arduinos separate Arduinos connected so then I can test different codes with different Arduinos so if I'm if I've done a code in one Arduino and I'm using it for something and then I need to change something I can run it on the second Arduino I don't have to change the first one and then I can compare it or I can like you know I can use three or four Arduinos to talk to each other to do to do different things and stuff like that because as you know these um, these chips uh, I think this uh, 328 has uh, only 32k of uh, memory on it so the, I don't know how much the Arduino takes on it but uh, you know soon if you run in the complicated code the memory on it is gonna you know is gonna get full so you can have two Arduinos talking to each other and then sharing the code between so that in essence now you got 64k of space to run between these two so that's that's the project that I'm working I'm gonna make a platform that I have three separate Arduinos with a lot of uh, breadboard around in the middle and I have a lot of sensors around to you know allow me to you know to do uh, prototyping to do tests and to do things like that so that's the project that I'm working on now the first thing I obviously I needed to do was to make a power supply from Arduino now as you know the Arduino the chip that I have here runs on the data sheet it says it runs from 1.8 to 5.5 Obviously, if you run it at 5 volt, then you get the full speed of the microcontroller, which is 20 megahertz. If you run it at, you know, less less than that, then you got 8 megahertz and 10 megahertz and the rest of them. So, I want to run this from uh, 5 volt, so I get the full speed of the microcontroller. Now, as it being a, a platform that I can put on top of my, uh, you know, on top of my desk and work on, and stuff like that, I don't want it to be bulky, I don't want it to be heavy. So I decided, you know, I'm going to use a DC-DC converter, step-down DC-DC converter for the power supply. Now one problem is, 
You can get DC-DC converters on eBay, really cheap, they're about a couple of bucks, but the problem with them is they're very noisy on the output, they, you know, the, once you start pulling a little bit of current, uh, the ripple goes really high and the noise on the output of the power supply, it's not very good to put on, uh, you know, to run anything you know, on your microcontrollers, op amps and stuff like that, because that's going to cause problem. You know, if you got too much noise, then the, the reset pin of your microcontroller might trip and your microcontroller might, you know, continue to reset and, you know, not function properly. So I needed a power supply that has very low noise on the output. And this is what I come up with. Uh, let's just, uh, yep, I can focus. Now, this is based on the adjust version of the LM. 2575s and I have the other ones which are LM2596s I think they're kind of similar because they both work the same way now this is a circuit that I've come up with and I've tested this and the ripple and the output is very 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 low and the reason for that is because I've got three sets of sorry it's two sets of filter to you know to bring the ripple down after one after another now, as I said before, the Arduino runs on 5 volt. So what I've got here is I've got I got few version of the DC DC converter which I can adjust the voltage and I got three of them which are set to 5 volt as you can see here. So this output's 5 volt and this one I can select with this resistor here, I can select which voltage, you know, the output of the DC DC converter. Now, one thing which was important was obviously as I said was the noise on the output of the power on the DC DC converter. Now I'm going to show you the the ripple on the output of the DC DC converter. Now these ICs you can you know you can run up to um, I think about two amp perfectly fine with them. You sh shouldn't be any problem. So let's just see what we're doing here. Okay, now for the load for the output of the DC DC converter I'm going to use a couple of resistors because I do have a dummy load to run but uh, sometimes the dummy load can induce uh, a better noise into the output of the DC DC converter so for this test I'm just going to use uh, 1 watt resistors these are 10 ohm resistors so I'm going to have 4 of them connected together you can see here and I'm going to use my uh, multimeter to show me how much current I'm pulling from the DC DC converter. Here we go here. Yep, as you can see here, I'm pulling 1.7 amp. The voltage, which was 5 volt, is dropped to 4.81, which is still works fine on my microcontroller. Uh, it's only a 20 millivolt drop. That's not a problem. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the the ripple on the output of the DC DC converter. Uh, if it comes up. Nope. Huh. There we go, it's barely visible. You can see it's 24.5 millivolt. As you can see here, I'm at 20 millivolt per division, so I've got one division, which is about 20 millivolt ripple noise on the output of the DC DC converter. There we go. Uh, I'm feeding 10 volt and it's putting 1.1 amp and you can see here that up the current has gone to 1.8 because the resistor is starting to smell and they're starting to burn and the voltage is 4.79 and the IC is not even warm and you can see here. Now to test these DC DC converters you can't just go and connect your scope with this uh, you know with this big ground lead and everything you need to make a jig you need to make something that you can test the output of the power supply right at the output of the actual power supply so this is what I've made I made a little hoops here for the ground and a little hoops here that connects into the actual scope and I am measuring right at the end of the uh, you know at the output of the DC DC converter so this circuit that you can see here on the almost full load which uh, these ICs can go up to I think 2 amp they can handle 3 amp but I think it's rated at 2 amp at 2 amp almost a full load I only get 20 millivolt of ripple on this DC DC converter which I'm really happy with here's another you know here's another 5 volt so I'm going to use these DC DC converters for the little 
Arduino platform that I'm going to build. So yeah, that's just wanted to show you the the output report of the DC DC converters and the uh, things that are made. So I've got six of them. I've got one of them is on the floor. Just trying to make a run for it. There we go. I've made six of these. And um, I did have these ICs. Of the uh, you know I've I've took them out from uh, some test gears that I had a long time ago. I don't know if the camera focuses. There we are. So let me explain what I got. So I got the voltage coming in from here. I got two capacitors here. Let me just put the camera down. We have we got two capacitors here for the input filters. Then obviously I got my uh, shocky diode. I got my inductor. Then after the inductor, I got another capacitor to filter out the noise. And then that output of the inductor goes to another inductor. And then through set of uh, another two capacitors. And then that goes into a Farad bead and another capacitor and out. Uh, this took me about a day to make the circuit, you know, the, the output, the ripple of the output of this really low. I mean, before I've, I just really nearly I placed it, all the components wherever and, I, you know, I just made a couple of circuit board and the, the flux of the inductor was just uh, causing all sorts of problem in the in the DC DC converter. So what I've done, I've I've, I've moved the IC all the way up. I've uh, brought the inductor all the way down here, so you know there's there's no the flux doesn't uh, get to the IC, and you can see here. So this you can see here, this works really good. And um, the the reason uh, it's oddly shaped is because I just used my um, whatever PCB I had left from a previous projects. So I just cut them to size and just uh, I you know I try to use them. I don't want to waste any any PCBs and stuff like that. So yeah. You can see here, I got five of these, and they can handle up to two amp, no problem. And uh, yeah, uh, the one other problem I've uh, had, I don't know if you've noticed on the PCB, you can see that there's a lot of uh, flux residue on the board. And the reason for that is uh, recently I bought um, solder paste from eBay. This is a uh, multi-core, which is a known brand. And this is expired. As you know, solder paste have um, expiry date on them. As you can see here, it says the 41st week of 2014. So it's expired by kind of maybe a month or so. I don't know. So the, the reason for this, is just show you. Here's a solder paste. Uh, and this is 500 gram. Uh, if you want to buy this from, a, say, from DigiKey or anywhere, you know, anywhere else, because this is a known brand, this is going to cost you a lot of money. Now, I bought this really cheap from eBay because uh, the person obviously advertised that this is expired because the 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 date on it is gone so i bought this for about 15 quid which i thought was uh, you know very cheap now one problem with this is once you start heating it with your heat gun the uh, i think the best thing to do is just to show you exactly what happens when you start heating this up with a heat gun if i just get uh, by the way this is the test boards that i did before so if i just grab a little screwdriver just grab a bit of paste, put it on top here, and then grab my soldering station, and then heat it up. As you can see, it just turns into a kind of a gooey thing. And then what happens is, as you can see, that happens. It turns into kind of a lumpy thing, and then starts to smoke a, a lot. And then after a while, once the flux is gone a bit funny then it starts to melt you can see here so it, it's it's still it's still usable it still works all right the only problem as I said is the the flux the flux goes everywhere so what I what you need to do is once you use this then I need to obviously go with the flux cleaner and clean everything and then just spray it with the lacquer so then the the tracks doesn't get affected but all in all, for the price that I paid for this, for you know, 15, 16 pound, it's not an issue. I mean, I what I can do is, uh, if I just uh, connect my, uh, say I got another bit, and I put it here. I think I've got some boards that I haven't used before. Let me just get the, yeah, there we go. Say for instance, I get these boards, and you can see here, this is the place for the 
I, the chip that I was going to put. So if I just put a bit of goo there, like so. I can use my soldering iron. There we go. You know? All nice. So I can use it either with my uh, soldering iron or I can use it with my uh, heat gun. But still, as you can see here, it leaves a residue there. So the the best thing to do is once once it's done, just quickly clean it up and uh, yeah. I think I think if the price that I paid, I think it's worth it. I mean, if the guy have have more, I'm still gonna buy. You know, he he only had one, but if if he advertised any more, I'm just gonna buy it because, as I said, these are really 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 expensive. I mean, for this, you you would probably pay about seventy eighty pound for five hundred gram at Digit 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 Key or somewhere else, and this is a you know known brand. It's not a, a fake or anything like that. So. Yeah, uh, just to show you some of the stuff, uh, I ordered some uh, CNC parts from internet. Believe it or not, very expensive. I uh, didn't know the CNC you know, parts were that expensive, but yeah, I've ordered some stuff. Came to about 100 and, 170, 180 pound. So I'm just waiting for them to get delivered, and uh, yeah. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my uh, Arduino platform, uh, prototyping platform. Once I've done that, then I'm gonna start, you know, start working on Arduino and uh, how to control my motors, stepper motors, and the rest of the stuff for my uh, for my uh, CNC machine. Also, I've received my uh, Pig Micros that I ordered. These are the digital uh, processing ones. So these are the DS Pig 33. If the camera focuses, oh, doesn't like to focus. Here we are. So I ordered 15 of them, so that's what they sent me. Uh, I went direct to Microchip because uh, they were cheaper than anywhere else. I mean some guy on eBay was flogging this at about £10 each. I bought this for like £2.80 each. So you know, you gotta, you gotta be careful at eBay because not, you know, eBay doesn't mean it's always cheap. So besides, oh, you know, you're not 100 sure if they're fake or they're real or whatnot. So these are obviously are bought from Microchip, so obviously they're not going to be fake or anything like that. So yeah, just wanted to show you some of the stuff that I've done so far. And uh, yeah, once I've done a second, once I've this, you know, connected these onto my uh, platform, once I, you know, routed everything and all the stuff like that. Then I'll do another video because what I need to do is I need to make actual board for the Arduinos that I have. So as you know, I bought some stuff from eBay before I did a video on them. Uh, so I'm gonna have the UART UART board, three UART board down here. Then I'm gonna have my three Arduinos here. Then I'm gonna have rest, some other stuff circuitry here. And then I'm gonna have the sensors. So I'm gonna have the you know the micro the stepper motor driver. I'm gonna have the light sensor i'm gonna have uh, you know rotary encoder i'm gonna have uh, all, all sorts of stuff that i bought from ebay i'm gonna put it in my uh, arduino you know prototyping platform that i'm making so then you know i whatever i want is within reach in so i can test i can do codes and stuff like that so i don't have to do a lot of wiring and you know things hanging around in my bench and stuff like that so this platform that i'm gonna make is gonna have everything on it and uh, you know it's going to be great so that's that's the next project coming up so yeah thanks for watching if you like the video like always give it a thumbs up and until next video goodbye